Dan, good morning to you. I'm not sure how many times we can sort of absorb these uh, anonymously sourced supply chain stories about this name. You, in general, uh, don't put much credence in them. Look, I think there's a lot of ebbs and flows to the Apple supply chain. But at the end of the day, they overordered by about 8 to 10 million units going in. So I think this report, it, it kind of contradicts what we're seeing in terms of Asia supply chain checks where it's stronger than expected. This is across from China in terms of demand perspective in the U.S. And if the strongest holiday quarter Apple's ever had is weak, then call it weak. But to me, I think this is a, a stock that's on its way to $3 trillion mark cap. What, what takes you to 200, uh, Dan? Is this a, a scenario where you would have to wait for the spring quarter where we typically hear more about capital returns or is it something else? Well, it's really about services. I think services is a big part of the re-rating. We used to have about 1.5 trillion valuation to that are some of the parts, and that could be upwards of 80 billion going into next year. So I think that's something on the services going to continue to be strong. And then I look at the overall product cycle. I think it's the, the strongest product cycle we've seen out of Cupertino in over a decade. And even though we'll have these sort of gyrations and maybe some white knuckle periods. I ultimately think this is a stock with a two in front of it going into next year. Dan, uh, I don't see how this report even makes sense, the idea of demand weakness in the holiday quarter, given the supply constraints that Apple has guided to, that the market also reacted negatively to, by the way, and uh, the lead times that we've continued to see, the checks um, that so many analysts have done. I, I don't get it. Do, do you get it? Look, it's a bit of a head scratcher, uh, to, to be honest, in terms of looking at. But what I do think happened here is, you know, as, as anyone's doing checks, that caught 8 to 10 million units. The fact that Apple's not reordering that, maybe being mistook, mis, sort of mischaracterized as being weak. But ultimately, that was them just overordering for, for holiday, knowing a supply chain crunch was coming. I mean, I think. Based on our checks, this is about 40 million iPhone units they're going to do between Black Friday and holiday. And that will be the, the strongest holiday quarter they've ever had. Now will be about 10 percent above current street estimates. So there's going to be a lot of noise here, but we're continuing to buy on the dips here. And you know, I think this is a stock that continues to move higher. Yeah, and as you say, you say it continues to march towards $3 trillion, in your opinion, Dan. Uh, services is a big part of that re-rating. But what do you make of App Store pressure? We haven't talked about it in a little bit, but it's definitely still there. You saw Google, what, about a month ago, take down its fees preemptive to any kind of regulation. How big is that risk? Yeah, it's a golden goose for Apple when it comes to App Store. And I continue to focus on, despite Epic and what we've seen from a regulatory perspective, I mean, that's a pretty strong competitive moat. Around the edges, there could be some pressures, but it's going to be north of what I think is 80 billion going into next year. And that's a big part of the re-rating. If I go back the last 18, 20 months, I think going into the street was assigning a two, three hundred billion dollar valuation for services, and we think that's worth 1.5 trillion. And this is going to be a situation where the haters they'll, they'll hate it at one trillion, despise it at <laughs> two trillion, and then when it's three trillion, they'll be uh, yelling out into an empty cars. <laughs> Hey, Dan, finally, um, longer term, we've had a couple of weeks now to absorb those reports that Apple was uh, accelerating its, uh, its car program, specifically its autonomy uh, car program. Um, yesterday, there's, there's some work at Morgan Stanley. They're wondering whether or not that eventually turns the auto industry into a subscription model and makes Tesla the Blackberry of mobility. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I view it as it's a matter of when, not if. Uh, Apple gets into the the EV, especially on autonomous. We think an Apple car by 2025. But this is not a zero-sum game. I mean, Tesla's going to continue to have an ironclad ownership of the market. But we view it as a $5 trillion green tidal wave, biggest transformation to the auto industry since 1950. So I viewed just Apple throwing their hat in the ring as just another indication of where this market's moving. But we continue to believe that that is uh, going to happen. It's a matter of how and ultimately when uh, in terms of with a partner.